had a couple of special elections this week. Both of them went in the direction of the Democratic candidate, and this led to some new analysis of how all of these special elections have been going, which points in a very different direction from how the polling has been going. Of course, the polling has Biden and Trump very tight. It has Republicans with a significant edge in terms of the congressional ballot. But these special elections have sort of consistently swung towards the Democrats um, by double digits over what would be expected. So go ahead and put this analysis up on the screen. We want to make sure and flag this for people. This is from ABC News. And uh, they say that Democrats have been winning big in special elections. But on average, so not in one race or the other, on average, they have won by margin of 11 points more than the weighted relative partisanship of their district. So whatever you would expect based on presidential results and based on what the normal partisan lean of a district is, Democrats have been outperforming that by about 11 points. Um, one of the special elections uh, this particular week was actually in New Hampshire district that is six percentage points more Republican leaning than the nation as a whole. It went for Trump, yet the Democrat won by 12 points. So that is an 18-point Democratic overperformance above their partisan baseline. Okay, so now you may be asking, does any of this matter? Hmm. Well, that's kind of an open question. Um, but usually, put the next piece up on the screen, usually what happens in these special elections does seem to correlate with what happens in terms of the uh, National House popular vote. So if you have Democrats who are overperforming the special elections, they tend to overperform when it comes to the congressional ballot, when it comes to uh, midterm or presidential year elections. They go through the data here. Now, the, the relationship does not always hold. Um, there was a year here in uh, 1997 and 98 where Republicans were overperforming by 12 points. But then when it came to the National House popular vote, it was more or less even. They were at 0.9. So not a big correlation there. But if you look at a lot of these other years, you can see there seems to be a trend of whatever party is overperforming the special elections tends to do well come the congressional vote. Now, you could probably guess some of the reasons that might be contributing to this. Um, same as when the uh, predicted red wave did not materialize in the midterms, could very much be, you know, Know, discussed with Trump and Stop the Steal and, crucially, abortion, which obviously has uh, really motivated the Democratic part of the electorate. You could also say, you know, this could have to do, and this may actually lessen the impact when it comes to a presidential election year, but it used to be that Republicans were the party that had more of the college-educated voters yes. who were more likely to be to routinely show up election after election after election. It was more difficult for Democrats to turn out their, their base. That dynamic has now flipped, where it is Democrats who overwhelmingly are backed by college-educated voters who are more likely to consistently turn out for elections. So you could say, OK, well, maybe they're turning out for these special elections. But when you have a general election with likely Trump and Biden on the ballot, you may get a very different electorate. Another reason why you may have a discrepancy between what's happening in these special elections versus what the polls look like at this point is right now the polls do not have what's called a likely voter screen. They're just looking at everybody, all registered voters, and they haven't started to factor in, all right, but who's going to actually show up and who's not going to show up? So that could account for the difference. But it is very interesting to note that when people have actually been going to the polls and voting for candidates, Democrats have on average been outperforming by about 11 points. Yeah, I think all these points are very valid. I think the only reason why we should all zero in, as you said, is they've been especially predictive. And look, in retrospect, they were one of the most predictive things of what was to come in the 2022 midterm elections. And yeah, also, that's true. I mean, the real thing is, is that I believe very strongly that one of the problems with polls is that they are unable to account for massive, small cha uh, massive changes in a very short period of time. So one of the reasons that the polls were completely wrong in 2016 is that Trump activated a ton of people who just had never voted before. And so pollsters had not built that into their model. All of these white working class voters crawled out of the woodwork. They hadn't voted since Ronald Reagan and decided to come out to vote for Trump. The same thing happened with abortion. A lot of people who never voted before, never cared about electoral politics, crawled out of the woodwork and decided to vote. Also, 
even amongst people who do vote, these were people who increased their voting percentage. So as you said, if even if you increase college educated voters who usually come out to vote at let's say 60 whatever percent, they're voting at 80, 90 percent. That's why some of these were happening. Well, that still represents a big change in the election. I think that these special elections are so indicative for that reason that, especially when we're living through such crazy times, nobody anticipated the level of voter turnout that we saw in 2020. Or in 2020. Yeah. That was massive. Then everyone's like, ah, oh, Dems are gonna get blown out, midterms, they always follow the script. Yeah, but in the aftermath of COVID, all this insanity and then Dobbs, it's like, oh, boom, we just had a big election. I think we'll probably have just as big a one. Big voter turnout is usually a bad sign, at least right now for Republicans, because it just means newer voters who are entering the fray. Why in this moment would you be new to voting? For a lot of reasons, it's abortion. And if abortion skews dramatically towards Democrats. So it's a big flashing red sign, I think, for Republicans. I've also seen some data to indicate that young voters, Zoomers yeah. and young millennials, have really been surging to the polls in these elections. Abortion, and obviously yeah. that benefits Democrats. Right. And I do think that there is a direct line between that and Trump, but also largely mm -hmm. abortion. Now, the other side of it is, listen, the midterms did not have Donald Trump on the ballot. And the, um, you know, the 2018 midterms Smart. did not have Donald Trump on the ballot, also when Democrats did very well. Donald Trump likely is going to be on the ballot this time around. So does that bring back the dynamics we had in the past where the polls then understate Republican support? I have no idea at this point. Yeah. But I will say, I think it's really important to take note of this data because the polls have, we've seen misses at this point in both directions on the polls, but when people actually have to show up to vote, I think taking note of that voter behavior may actually be more indicative of the direction that we're heading in with a million caveats. We don't know what the economy is going to be like. We don't know what the war in Ukraine is going to be like. We don't know what inflation is going to be What's like. What's the gas price? We don't yeah. know what Trump's trials <laughs> yeah. are going to be like. Right. We don't know. I mean, there's a million factors between now and then. Not to mention, I'm sure there are going to be things that, are hap that happen that we have no concept of right now and could not possibly name, even as a potential chaos X factor. So- a million caveats, but this is really interesting. Let me put another one as a former Kentucky resident um, who's kind of obsessed with Kentucky politics. They're one of the few states that has elections on the ballot this year. Virginia also has legislative uh, elections on the ballot this year, but Kentucky's electing a governor this year. Now, back, bear with me for a minute. Back in 2015, the year before Trump is elected, Kentucky had what ended up being a very canary in the coal mine kind of election. Now, People nationally, they have this conception of Kentucky as a red state. That's sort of true. But at the state level, back in 2015, actually, Democrats still hate, held the state house um, and they held the governorship. So the Kentucky uh, Democratic candidate for governor was significantly in the lead, seemed to have large margins, seemed to be beating the Republican nominee, a guy by the name of Matt Bevin, by a large amount. Bevin was this kind of like Trumpian businessman kind of a character. And out of nowhere, there was a, a low uh, turnout election and Bevin massively outperforms the polls and ends up sweeping into power, even though this was very unexpected in Kentucky politics. Okay, so ends up being a bellwether then for Trump precipitates, you know, Trump coming into 2016. Okay, so this time around, um, you have an incumbent Democratic governor, a guy by the name of Andy Bashir, who surprisingly is actually, even as a Democrat in a red state, one of the most popular governors in the entire country. And he's running against a Mitch McConnell protege by the name of Daniel Cameron, who's currently the AG. Put this up on the screen. This is polls. Take it with a grain of salt. They could be just as wrong as they were last time in Kentucky. But every poll that has come out of this race in recent months has had Andy Bashir leading, the Democrat leading, and actually by quite significant margin. So this one, this is an internal poll, so always take those with a grain of salt, but it actually reflects similar margin to what we've seen in other polls. And it has Andy Bashir up on, Dan, on um, uh, Daniel Cameron mm -hmm. by a margin of nine points. And he's over 50%. It's 51% to 42%, again, in the relatively red state of Kentucky. Kentucky. So if this result holds, that would be another thing to take a look at. Um, the other survey that was taken this summer had uh, Andy Bashir leading Dan Cameron by eight points. So even though this is an internal, it seems to track with some of the other uh, polling that is out there. So that is another one, another potential bellwether to watch, which has been indicative at other times in the past. Now, it's not the end all be all. Again, a million things can happen. You got Donald Trump on the ticket, who is a wild card in and of himself. But I think it's really interesting to take note 
of what is happening when voters are actually showing up at the polls. Absolutely. I mean, of course, that was the most indicative thing of the polls, and it's why we have to zero in on it. And when you see a Republican underperformance, it's still a big problem, especially in a state like Kentucky. I mean, it's also smart for Bashir to be talking about abortion all the time. We already know from that law that went up for a referendum in the state of Kentucky that even in a deep red state, which, what did Trump win it by, like 30 points or something outrageous so like, that. Something like that? It's something yeah. 20, 30 points, just blown out of the water. They still can't get it past the finish line. So it yeah. also, a lot of people, as I was talking about, who don't traditionally vote, came out to vote for that one. They came out to vote in Michigan, in Ohio, Kansas. And the story is over and over and over and over again on the same thing. So any politician who's attached to that cause is the best possible thing that you can do. Yeah, Andy Bashir is running a brutal yeah, I ad it right now. Night. Did you watch it? Yeah, it was horrible. About abortion, it's this young girl who is straight to camera, and, you know, she's the picture of the, you know, white all-American mm -hmm. girl talking about the fact that she, at 12 years old, was raped and that Dan Cameron would have forced her to have that baby. Right. It is brutal. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, just shows you, even in a state like Kentucky, which is very religious, very culturally conservative, even in Kentucky— this issue is a killer for Republicans, yep. and the Democratic governor is making as much out of it as he possibly can. Absolutely. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to BreakingPoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber-funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So, again, to subscribe, it's BreakingPoints.com.